you had 59 a few years ago, and you had a few games at the end of the year, I think, where you were sitting on 59. Um, how tough is it to just have that number right in front of you and the very next game go out and do it? How, how did you deal with that, having that big 60 in front of you and not quite being able to get it? Uh, how did I deal with it? By not getting it. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, it, you know, it's, it's obviously you can't you can't run from it, you can't hide from it. Uh, you could tell in the stadium, you could tell um, their team, the, the pitcher on the mound d- doesn't want to be the one to give it up. Uh, so, yeah, that's all that's all extra distractions, outside noise. You got to be able to to, to c- compress all that and still stay in your zone and uh, stick to your approach and w- which he's done all year and uh, ob- obviously tonight too. Also about your relationship with him, I asked him in here, and he said that he's grown by leaps and bounds, he said, just from being around you and leaning on you and your wisdom and stuff. Um, What have you tried to impart to him? Um, He was already a great hitter when you got here, but how have you tried to help him improve maybe off that? Uh, Well, we're we're very... Very similar. Uh, we have a lot, uh, a lot of the same tools, a lot of the same uh, ways to go about baseball. So just kind of bouncing off those type of ideas because we can't. Um, it's it's hard to, I guess, relate to everybody when you're when you're looking for a mindset or a, an approach or or you know how how is this guy going to come at me? Uh, uh, as opposed to other hitters, so it's just good to to have, you know, uh, like a brother to to bounce off and and just uh, keep keep each other accountable, keep each other pushing, and and yeah, uh, wishing each other the best every night. Dave, do you have the mic? Yeah, to the left. Giancarlo, you know what it feels like when you're swinging well and you can hit home runs in in bunches. When you look at him, we've just talked about the numbers sixty and sixty one, but how far do you think he can? get i mean he's hit three in two games now i mean do you think he has he has a ways to go here where he can kind of crank out a few more uh i think there there's no limit and there's no um there's no jumping the gun you know it's it's one at bat at a, at a time one pitch at a time uh uh when he when he gets the next one it's gonna go on to the next one the next at bat uh but at, as the 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 distractions and everything else come to him that's when he has to be more tunnel vision and and just just be ready for what's coming dan and andy to the right hello uh aaron is obviously focused on the wins and all that but how much do you think he's enjoying this this chase and and getting to 60 and all that do you do you see it inside a little bit more yeah i i think he'll i think he'll fully realize um after the fact, I think that he's he's zoned in and and uh, has plenty of bats to go. So I, I think when you're doing something like this, you don't sit in in the moment. You're like, what can we do next? What can uh, the better I do, the more uh, we're gonna win, and the more uh, he's gonna um, achieve history. So uh, it's all it, it all works together. Andy, uh, you talked about. Judge's ability to, I think you said, compress to like keep the external noise out, and it seems publicly that he's doing that really well. Like, you hear about Roger Maris and how much this stressed him out, and he doesn't seem to be going through that. Yep. Is that what you see also behind the scenes, as much as we see publicly that he's that even keeled about it? And if so, how difficult is that to do mentally? Uh, well, he's been through it. He's been, uh, I mean, obviously not this specific, but I'm seeing he's been through. Uh, uh, the media and the buzz here, and it's it's like nowhere else. So he he's got a good head start on on how to compress and and uh, throw out the noise there. But um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we're playing baseball, and uh, if you prepare the the way he does, um, you know, you don't got to worry about everything else going on. It'll be fine. Take a couple more, Chris, right here in the middle. Before your grand slam, did you feel in your previous at bats that you were close to breaking through yourself? Uh, you want to hope you're close for you know the the last two two 
three, four, five weeks. But uh, you, you keep pushing, you keep uh, working, and and trying to get something that clicks. But I feel like uh, I feel like I saw the ball pretty well tonight. Just uh, didn't uh, didn't show to the last at bat, but. Um, that's the beauty of this game. That's the difficulties of this game, and and uh, just gotta take that in tomorrow. All the way to the right, Bob Giancarlo, right here. Um, what do you think about Aaron's ability to intimidate pitchers? I mean, right, he's hitting home run after home run after home run, and it feels like he can do it at any time if if he gets a mistake. And then, you know, you've been in the same position where everything you're locked in and everything seems to go out and. How do you think that affects the picture? What are you seeing? Uh, well, the they definitely don't want to give up a homer, and I, I would say the I would say the younger ones are the ones that this is their first type of experience. They try so hard uh, not to make a mistake that they make the mistake. So um, it, it happens in the reverse sometimes that you're so. Um, nervous or get out of your your mindset uh yourself on the mound and um so it's cool to see it's cool to see uh the that cat and mouse to begin with that chess game they're playing and just uh watching him time after time come out on top